out. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess that was it. So anyway, we can talk about anything else. Anybody have any questions, any other things that you want to chat about? We can talk about all kinds of No, it's part 41. 18, it was, they established it in 1839. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm of the opinion, and Cantor Brown, historian, is also that there were two Fort Cummings. And my idea is that the other one is in, was near Lynchburg, mm. right near your street. <laughs> <laughs> but if you well, run into that... I have seen, now, I have seen Fort Cummings placed in a different location, and I didn't know why, because I knew about this. They, the, I didn't know if there was another, maybe they moved it or something. They took it down. And then they, when the Indian problem came up again, right, they the rebuilt it a half a mile from where the first one was. Okay. A half a mile west. Yeah, west. And keep in mind, because most of these forts that were in this fort network in the area were used during the 1830s for a short time period and occupied. So once they had the second Seminole Indian War, and that was put to rest, then most of those forts were unused, and so they didn't. And the, the third Seminole Indian War um, was... 57 to 58. Yeah, it was 55 to 58. So, you know, there was a big gap in there, so all those things like we talked about with, between the difference between the buildings and the fort would have fallen into serious decay in, in a 10 or 20 year period. So, then they needed to have forts again for this, the third Seminole Indian War, um, which essentially was started by surveyors cutting down Billy Bow Lake's banana plants. So, um, in South Polk County. <laughs> so, anyway, um, that's a whole story for another day. But, well, so, so that very well could have been. They could have moved the fort because most of those forts were unoccupied for a long They were only occupied for a short time period during the Second yeah. Civil War. And then they may have been reestablished in the place else. Yeah, some for only two months. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, strategically, when you look at the location where that fort was, that was a perfect place. They had to go right through the marsh there. And you're up on the hill, and you can see almost 270 degrees from where they put that fort. Fort Cummings is a great position. Okay. Yes. Um, specifically, where was that? In relation to the road today, is it as you go it's, through the Okay, curve? when you read the notes and you see where the hill is, because where they have it placed on that drawing relative to the road, mm -hmm. on that drawing, I don't believe that's actually accurate. Okay. Because based on the description in here, and it's up on the hill there, where you can see the view of Lake Alfred and Lake Cummings to the south. In there, that's where the fort was. So south of the road. And I, no, it's north of the road. North of the road. North of the road, up on the hill there on Gapway's property. So and by so Adams' I, John estate. and I have talked about, I've talked about what John looking for. I think we can find it. Um, on I, actually, I just haven't had time. On so, the Adams property, possibly? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Because that there's a marker the there. there. There's yeah. a marker there. So you got to yeah. keep in mind, too, back then, the but water yeah, levels were a lot higher. So when they're talking about a stream, they're talking about a real waterway there. We've never seen that in our lifetime. Right. right. Well, that's the thing you got to think about. The water, nobody really thinks about the water drawdown and the things that have happened from mm -hmm. agriculture and from the other things that have happened in this area. I know that the lake positions were dramatically different whenever they canal and chain together. Just think about it for a little bit. You got one lake that's up here, you got another lake that's up here, you canal them together, they're going to come to a median. So the lake areas have changed significantly since they canal all these lakes together. So okay. there's a lot of stuff that has happened. Like, uh, you know, lake, um, that isthmus and stuff that goes between Lake Cannon and Lake Mirror wasn't even there. That was all like an hourglass in Winter Haven. Um, I don't know when, you know, that whole area there on uh, Lake Ship, Lake May, Lake Howard, all that was filled. Wow. The whole area in there was filled. Because I've done survey work in there, recovered the original positions of where that stuff is, and there's probably um, four to five foot of fill that's been placed in there in that whole area, and they built that land that was just a swamp. So, yeah. Yeah, sorry. There was another fort that was just um, east of here called Fort McClintock, and it was on a Lake McClintock. And I've been working on this for a long time, trying to figure out Lake McClintock. And what's the name of that? Lake that the cemetery's on, up by where Ellen lives, I think. Lowry. 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 Is, that, is Lake Lowry, Lake McClintock? Do you know the, the I do not know. This okay. is the first I've heard of this. All right. um, I mean, it doesn't. You know, 
Go back in there and see if it... Because sometimes in the old survey documents, the old survey records, they would um, go to the township plat. I don't know what township plat is. Yeah, I've only done one of these around. forts on the... That there's a website you can go to that shows all this stuff. Okay. And I, I did a lot of I do a lot of work out of force, but the the Fort Arbuckle is the only one I went and looked at the plats and the 1848 surveys for. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it for McClintock, so I I just yeah. wondered if you ran across it before that. I that's a new one to me. I mean, I can look and scratch around in our stuff. Well, yeah, well, no, yeah, well, if you put me on the trail, I can look. Yeah, stuff. Right, that's, that's <laughs> what I do too. You know, so. I mean, so, so yeah, but because a lot of that stuff yields benefits to me later on, you know. So depending on what we do, so I don't mind. If I have time, scratch around a little bit for something. Rob, well, that one post there. that you showed him was in Lake Lowry, though, up there. In the yeah, it was. I mean, so you know, we did a bunch of work around there. I don't know if the name of that lake changed, and um, you know, over time period, it did, just like Lake San Terry and Lake Mariana, and other things like that. So there's a lot of things that changes that would go on. Um, and so another thing. So now let's kind of connect the dots a little bit before we kind of wrap up here. We had um, in the before the 1830s in that area and there, the, all of the cities and commerce and everything happened in the ports because that was the means of travel. And then um, later on, because of the wars, you had all these fort areas established, which became the fort cities, right? So Bartow, so all those. So in the interior, you had two types of cities, two types of communities that developed. One were the fort cities. And the other one were the railroad communities. Because when the railroad came in, and the, the easy way to tell this apart is the railroad cities are not um, geographically oriented. They're all oriented to the railroad. They're all parallel and perpendicular to the railroad. So Auburndale, Bowling Green, uh, I mean, just go around on the track there. You know, the ones that weren't fort cities were railroad communities. So those are basically your two types of communities that were developed in all of Central Florida, for the most part. So, sir, we skipped over it really quickly. I, I saw one of your uh, slides up there. The word Coddington. Mm -hmm. What? What? That's what the original community of like Alfred was named. I, I thought that was one of the original yeah. names of the Coddington. Yeah. Yeah, because when he says Coddington Flat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it still would refer back to that plat of Coddington because mm -hmm. that's the that would, that's the name of the plat. So whenever they describe the lots in there, that's how it was, they would describe it. So I'd, be, I'd be curious to find out the origin of that name. Yeah. Um, there was, it was a gentleman in Bartow, I believe, lived in Bartow, who bought that section of land, and I don't, I can't tell you when, but his name was Coddington. That's where the, that's where the name came from. And that's a lot of times it was either their name or their child's name or something. You know, people named it after their family members. How did you spell it? C O T T. This is SD, C O D. Um, we can look it up in afterwards. I can pull it up in there so we can see it. We'll get you the whole spelling for that. Yes, sir. One, one final question. I heard some time ago that there had been a an original survey error, and the southern border of Polk County was actually originally placed some mile or so south of where it really was, and it had to be moved back up. Are you familiar with this story? Well. Uh, if you go back to the township plats, I'm aware of all that that happened in there. What happened was the, the surveyors would start, um, the surveyors were supposed to start and run a certain way when they surveyed the township. And there's another letter that I have from the surveyor general reprimanding all the surveyors when they were doing stuff in this Polk County area. They were going helter skelter every which direction. Because you're supposed to close. Um, the township on a certain side, and then you throw the air on that side. Well, surveyors in here were going every which way, so you got closing townships would have, you know, here again, they're trying to, they're survey, somebody else is surveying this, okay, the six miles, then somebody else comes in and surveys the section, and they'll start up here and run south, or, you know, they're doing all kinds of things in Polk County. You know, when you run a certain direction, they're not surveying, their chain link is different, so when they get down here, they have Fat sections and skinny sections, okay? <laughs> so they have excess and deficiency. And that should wind up down here and tie into the township line, right? Remember, the guys came in here and did this other stuff in there. Seminole Indian War going on. There's all kinds of other stuff disrupted in here. They come in here and they survey the township line. Then the guy comes back in here, 
15 years later or something, he's commissioned to survey the sections. He comes in here and he's not measuring the same way the other guy was. He overruns down here out of the township line and runs over into the other township. That whole area down there, there's multiple areas down there along the south line of Polk County where the townships actually overlap. Wow. They don't really overlap, but the surveyors that did the surveys in those in the subdivision of those sections didn't find the township line and they overlap. So there was an overlap down there of you know, half a mile and stuff in some places in there. And so you know that's where I come in and you have to come in there and reestablish where things really work and you got things like junior senior rights and all those other things that come into play that would have established the townships where it really should have been even though these guys got lost and some of these guys you know, it's just like every other profession some guys do an outstanding job you know FT you know BF Whitner you know other people did an outstanding job and then there's other people that don't um, did Whitner ever get his four dollars a month? That's a really great question. I've never seen whether he did after everything he went through. He, he absolutely deserved it. He did an outstanding job considering all the circumstances and the, the hardships that he had to endure and what he was up against. Um, his story is really, I'm glad that he did that because that's why we have the record. Otherwise, if he hadn't sent that letter to Congress requesting the other pay, I wouldn't have even had this story to tell today. Yeah. Wow. And we should all be glad that you don't have to write letters to Congress to get your $4 a <laughs> month. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's business practices. Sometimes I collect two up front. <laughs> then I don't have to worry about the extra two so much. <laughs> so, what, was, what was the process for, like, when they ran across a, a lake and you have these straight lines, how, how did they tackle that? Well, I see how you do it with your kayak, but I... <laughs> yeah, well, that, and see, that was a really burning question for old uh, Henry Washington. And I have no idea because what they would traditionally do, they would come to a lake, um, turn to the other township that is better than this one is. So, because this doesn't have many lakes in it. It's got like hand hooks over here, which is you. Go to, go to this one. I'm not sure how to go to anything, but okay. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have got out of it. Let me start with the PowerPoint real quick and we'll get the whole get it up there full size. So, okay, go up to the top and hit this right up here where the presentation up here at the top. Mm -hmm. Go. No, no, no. Go up here a little further and it'll click and turn it back on. To the picture? <coughs> to go over more. Start start the slides right there. Click that and it'll start. Look at that. Okay. Let well, me run through here and get to this. <laughs> um, right. So, and to answer your question, right, right here on Lake Alfred. Yeah. See these other lines on here? Those those lines? How B. F. Whitner did this? He actually would triangulate when he did this. He would come up here. He would put a stake or a post right here um, as a temporary post, and then he would come up here and set another post. And he would figure the distance based on the triangulation here doing simple trigonometry. Okay? To figure out where it was supposed to be. He'd come here, he'd turn his line, his angle from here, go straight across over here, and he would establish another point on the other side over here, and then he knew what the distance was to cross the lake. Wow. That's and he was really good at that. Because let me tell you, whenever that other corner I was telling you about, the one that's up here in the marsh for Lake Lowry, it, that one I was showing you is right there. Okay, on the east shore of Lake Lowry. This is Lake Lowry. Um, and I can't see the name on that. We'll look at that in a minute to see if it's got your name on there that you're talking about. But the, I came off of this corner right here um, that was proven, that I could prove. And I wasn't able to get across here. Well, he had, um, wait a minute, was it that one? Yeah, it's two, yeah, two and a half miles. Came off of this corner right here. There's another lake in here and some other stuff. And you see this triangulation right here? Mm -hmm. He actually went up this line, triangulated around this thing, came over here, and I came over here, and then he turned and set a post here and went out here, and I hit him within three feet. Wow. After going two and a half miles, after he calculated and triangulated going across the lake in there. That's wow. how good this That's guy crazy. was. Wow. He was awesome, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and he's using that stuff, and he's freezing cold, staying in the water, and he's got mosquitoes all over him, and Indians steal his stuff. <laughs> 
Okay, tell me how come, how many would like people would like to have an employee like that today? Okay. Did he deserve his four dollars a mile? He deserve like ten dollars a mile. Okay. Sure, it was hard to remember that his initial objective was to drain the swamp. <laughs> that wasn't his objective. His objective just was to stay alive and put the puppies in the ground and get his four dollars a mile from Congress. So anyway, so so that answered your question. Others see others didn't do that. They would what they would do is they would hit a lake and they would come in here and they just offset on a 90 what they thought was a 90, and they go north, and they go east, and they go back south. They wouldn't triangulate around the lakes. They were way off because their methodology and their their practices and procedures weren't nearly as solid. So when they would come off the other side of the lake, distance-wise they'd be way off, line on the line they'd be well. Yeah, Whitner, let me tell you, this line, his lines right here are like shooting out of a rifle barrel. He took some kind of, you know, military cannon and he shot it down here from one end to the other. That's how straight it was. It was phenomenal how this guy was. And he, he did his closing on attention to get them different. He would run the lines and intersect the lines. And he could run good lines. And his distance was good too. So you can count on where he stepped in there. He, I can run this line all the way across here six miles, and I don't think it varies four or five feet in six miles. That's like crazy. Wow. Okay? So anyway, um, I'm kind of giving you a little background in here, but it kind of it sweetens the story and helps you understand how, here again, like you're talking about some of these guys that outstanding, had outstanding skills and outstanding integrity and an outstanding job. There's another guy over here that surveyed on the east side of the ridge and Dundee and all that stuff over there. You could get a six-year-old Boy Scout with a handheld compass and he could walk out there and stick the post in as close to that guy. His error was 60 to 80 foot and a half mile. Wow. Okay? You, you can't follow him for nothing because he's totally unreliable. You're talking about the one I was talking about. Well, no, no, this was an original surveyor, original surveyor. As a matter of fact, they had to come back in and resurvey those townships over there in the 20s because he did such a bad job. Like Marion and like Hamilton and all that stuff in there. I just spent yesterday calculating a whole bunch of stuff from the resurvey that was done on Lake Hamilton over there in the 20s. So, and that in the 20s, when they came back in, they had a lot better equipment. They should be within, most of those surveyors in there were within, um, less than half a foot in a mile, you know, because they had much better equipment in that time in the 20s, and they were set posts, a whole different set of posts, a galvanized iron pipe that was three foot long, three foot in diameter, or three inches in diameter, with a brass cap on it. And then they would set those in concrete and do whatever. So, you know, they could get around a lot easier. They had a Model T to rub them around there or something in the 20s. Instead of a wagon with a foot and a mule that got stolen by the Indians. <laughs> All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.